Hey everybody, welcome to another video. Today we are looking at the PD Movie Live Air Smart 3. I am, I have just, full disclosure, I was not paid for this. I am not sponsored. I bought this with my own money and I am uh, giving you a filmmaker's honest opinion about it. For those of you that don't know, this is a LiDAR system. And what that means is basically, if you look uh, right to the left of that red light, that is basically shooting a beam of light. Let's keep it simple. So it's basically shooting a beam of light. And back to me, if you look, the beam of light is what is telling the motor where to focus. So once you've calibrated your lens, that beam of light determines the distance from the object it's hitting and it will adjust the lens automatically, giving you essentially an autofocus on your otherwise manual focus lens. This is really also very cool because you'll see that right now I have a red sticker on my lens and it is the red light. You can have up to five lenses calibrated to this PD Movie LiDAR motor, meaning that when you swap lenses, you simply pull the lens off, put the new lens on, and then double click, and it will go to a different color. And you decide which color is which lens. So if I were to pop this off, put on my 85 millimeter lens, I would pop it over to the green selection. And you can do that with up to five lenses. Calibrating this is pretty easy. Um, the instructions very clear. I'm not gonna get in the technical specs of it right now, but you basically put a focus sheet on the wall, um, you know, wall with nothing else really on it. And then you calibrate it using the set, the instructions given really close, medium, and then far away. And it's really, really easy uh, to do. And then once you've calibrated that lens, it remembers that lens. So this, I didn't have to recalibrate. I just put the batteries in this, turned it on, and then you hold the top button for about two long seconds and it goes through the full turn of the lens so that it knows where the lens is in focus. And then that's it, you're good to go. Uh, it comes with two sets of batteries. Well, this version did, so I bought the version with the uh, focus wheel, the Bluetooth focus wheel. So um, for that version, it comes with two sets of batteries, um, both for the focus wheel and for the motor. I have, I'm yet to run out of batteries on one. So uh, these last a really long time. You're gonna not be swapping batteries all the time. If for some reason you do run out of batteries, this at the top <clears throat> actually has a, a USB-C plug where you can run power from a USB-C. So should you need it, there's a way to keep going if you're in the middle of shooting and for some reason you forgot to charge. It comes with all the chargers you need. It also comes with what you see in the shot, the 15 millimeter uh, rail setup. You really want that beam of light at the top to be right down the barrel of your lens because if it's too far to one side, you may, the, in the middle of shooting, it may slip past what you're trying to focus on. And then by accident, it will focus on what's behind the subject versus the subject itself. Uh, who is this for? So if your camera already has an autofocus and you love the autofocus, this is probably not for you. Uh, this is for People with, uh, for me, for instance, as you see, I have a Blackmagic uh, cinema camera, so I don't have autofocus here. Uh, I do use cine lenses, so I generally uh, use manual focus for my lenses. So this is be some, something for someone like me, someone who uh, is used to pulling focus themselves, but if you shoot on gimbals a lot, if you do a lot of uh, wedding photography, videography, uh, this would be for you where you can now just set it up and no matter the distance you are from the bride and groom or the talent, whatever you're doing, you now can trust it. Videos like this, vlogging and internet videos, you know, I don't have to now worry about sitting too far back or forward, depending on, you know, if I adjust myself from where I originally set up the camera, I know it's just gonna follow me. As long as I'm in the beam of light, it's gonna follow me. But again, if I move, then it kicks to past me and then so on and so forth. So this, it, and also if you have lenses that have endless spin, um, no stop points, this won't work for you. It has to have stop points because that's how it calibrates where it is in the lens when you set it up. So some uses that I have found for this, uh, again, gimbals are great, but also, you know, this is something where because it gives you an option to get a manual focus uh, wheel with it, car rig, for instance, you might have the camera on the front of your car and you're in the back seat and you want to pull focus. Obviously the autofocus won't work in that instance because it's gonna be shooting against the car window, which is not the depth that you need for the, probably the actors in the car. So you can be in the back seat with the focus wheel, you know, mere six feet away from it, and you're pulling focus with this. And not to mention for that price point, the fact that you can keep this on your camera, you don't have to remove it, you don't have to reattach it to anything. It is just free floating thing. It really has nothing to do with the camera. I could have the camera off right now and the focus system would still 
focus on me. So it is completely independent of what your camera is doing. You just wanna make sure that that beam of light is in whatever you're gonna focus on. So some of the cons I would say, there's no power button on it. So you have to literally just kind of pull the batteries out a little bit to make it power off and then push the batteries back in when you want it to power up. Not a big deal. I, I Frankly, it doesn't bother me, but for some people that may bother you. Also direct sunlight. So if you're in the desert in the middle of a day, in the middle of the day, this may not work very well. Direct sunlight has a tendency to mess with the beam I've noticed. So it doesn't operate at its full potential. Be ready to switch to manual focus if you're in a really bright sunny situation. But if you're inside interiors, uh, exteriors in the shade at nighttime, this thing works perfectly. You could be in pitch black and this will still find the object in front of it just shoots that beam of light out and dark or not it will do it so you know there are some situations where the autofocus may not work perfectly but you know in that case you can just slide it over to manual focus and you know get it yourself let's talk real quick about the focus wheel so it is awesome it's very small it goes in a 3 8 thread and you can put it anywhere sometimes i put it on the outside of the camera cage sometimes i put it uh, on the handles when i'm on my shoulder rig I'll put it on the briefcase handle of the gimbal. So if I ever need to take over focus, I've got right there on my thumb. And uh, it's very versatile. It takes a very small battery, uh, but they give you two of them. And again, I've never run out of batteries with it. So I, the life of it, you can also plug up a USB power to it. So um, just a regular old school USB, you know, the ones that are outdated, not the USB C's, but um, you can just plug up power to it if you ever run out and again, they they gave you a fail safe So they gave you a way to use it even if you run out of battery <clears throat> The other quick cool things about the thumb wheel you can switch in and out of autofocus while shooting So there are certain directions that they give you where if you turn the wheel You know to its closest focal point and hold it it will kick to autofocus and then vice versa Do it the other way hold it for a few seconds, it will come back to manual focus. So you literally are, without any wires, you're throwing it back and forth, which is amazing and super helpful when you're in a situation where you're doing autofocus, maybe it's not quite doing what you want it to do, and you're just gonna, you just need to get it yourself, or there's a scene where you want a little more control of the focus, um, or setting AB points, which brings me to the next cool thing about this focus wheel, is that you can set AB points. So if your camera's on a tripod like this, I could set a rack focus where A would be me and then maybe B is looking out the window behind me. So if I was here, I could set, you You get to the focus of me, push the side button once and it sets that point. Then you throw the focus to where you want the B point to be, hit the button again, and now the lens will only go between those two points. It will no longer go the full length of the wheel. It will just go boom and boom. So if you wanna keep throwing it back and forth, you can turn the wheel as far as you want and it will just still, um, stay within those two A and B points, which is freaking awesome. I mean, just sometimes I just have my camera on a tripod and I just want to get a rack focus shot and I'll do a take and I'm not good at pulling focus. I'll be the first to admit it. And I will just throw the focus a little too far or I'll pull it back a little too far. And I'm just, you know, I've tried it with focus wheels with the stops and everything. And I'm just, you're wor for me as an indie filmmaker, I'm, I'm worried about so many things that Trying, taking focus off of my plate has just been amazing. It's been really wonderful. And, you know, I understand it's not perfect. Is it going to be for everybody? No. But if I want to do a slow push in shot, if I want to be on a gimbal and um, circle around the, the talent and not have to worry about the focus falling a little bit in and out, this is great. Last thing I'll say is the modes. Some people say it, it focuses too quickly. There are three modes. So you can make this go fast, which is where it will, um, it will go really quickly. So if you want to quick in out, it has that mode, it has medium, which is this one. So it's a little more, a little more soft in the way it pulls. And then there is a slow mode, which is much more in out, in out style. So it feels a little more natural uh, when, you're, when you're having it auto focus, feels a little bit less jarring, but I have found medium works really well, still feels fine, feels like somebody's behind there just kind of throwing it, getting it real quick. But fast is super fast, so if you're following, I would use fast more on a gimbal. If you're worried about those little movements in and out of focus, do fast because it will quickly adjust itself. Um, but yeah, this, is, this has been fine. I mean, when it comes to following, medium seems to be my sweet spot. In summary, this has been a game changer for me. I love this thing. I use it all the time for vlogging, for YouTube videos, for 
filmmaking. I'm getting ready to shoot my next feature film. I will be using this. Um, I have it rigged up perfectly where I never need to touch it, never need to move it. Just keep it charged up, make sure the lenses are calibrated and you're good to go. Um, I can't recommend this thing enough. Uh, it is worth the money for sure. <clears throat> if you want to pick one up, I have it down in the description below. Go ahead and grab one. And uh, if you're like me and you're really tired of pulling focus, uh, you won't regret it. All right, guys. See you on the next one.